Hello, I'm Miss Prothero, a Deputy Head Teacher. My role at school is to be the Senior Lead for Teaching, Learning, Assessment and Curriculum. Now what that means is I oversee all aspects of the school curriculum, including timetable, and then link to that student assessment. As a school, we prioritise breadth and depth in our curriculum that we teach here. We ensure that all children have access to all lessons and that no aspect of the curriculum is reduced for any child. That means that when your child joins us in Year 7, they will be able to study over 22 different subjects in their key six or three years. It's really important to understand that lots of schools have had to cut curriculum areas over the, over the last couple of years, particularly with the changes in um, data points for Key Stage 4, but we haven't done that. We've prioritised breadth, we've prioritised creativity, and we've prioritised enjoyment in every subject for every child at school. Curriculum at secondary school is very different to when your child is at primary. As a parent myself, having a child in a primary school, it's very much topic-led and I think it can be quite daunting when children join us in, in secondary school for parents to understand exactly what they're learning. This academic year, we spent a lot of time developing what we're calling learning journeys. Now, the learning journeys are essentially a roadmap for every lesson and every subject of what's being taught in that topic across that term. Now that might be a six week period, it might be a 10 week period, but essentially you can see how learning is developing in every single subject for your son or daughter whilst they're with us at school. Learning journeys can be found at the front of all books, but they can also be found published on our school website. It's a way for you to engage with your child at home and, and to open up that conversation of what you've been learning today because again, we know that they don't often tell you. So we're hoping that the learning journey system will enable you to understand uh, what your child has been studying at school and for, to help them articulate what they've learned today. It's really important for us as a school to understand your child, particularly as we've had huge lockdowns and swathes of learning lost over the pandemic. When children join us in Year 7, we spend a lot of time base testing so that we understand for each child where they are, what things they're brilliant at, and where the gaps in learning are, so that we as a staff and us as teachers can ensure that your child closes those gaps in learning and makes rapid progress. Every primary school is different. And I think that's something to be celebrated, but that does mean that when students join us in Year 7, their starting points on different topics or areas within a topic may be different depending on what they've learned. We are currently in week 2 of September and already we have baseline tested all of our new Year 7s. We can tell you um, where their gaps are, we can tell you their predicted GCSE grades, which sounds crazy when you're talking to parents of year sevens but we can also tell you their reading, their reading age, comprehension age, phonics understanding, mathematics ability and that really helps us as a staff to really plan for the needs of each child in school and make our curriculum reflective. Reading and phonics are incredibly important in all aspects of our school curriculum. One of the things we test for when students come into year seven is to whether there are gaps in phonics and we're not talking kind of basic phonics, we're talking the more complicated phonics, so stage four, stage five. Often, students can decode words but struggle with phonetic code if they've passed their phonics test in year one but haven't really developed that skill in the upper end of primary school. Starting from this year, we are really starting to reteach some of those phonetical skills for the students that, that need that teaching. That isn't necessarily if they're a child with special needs, it could be that they missed out on that teaching or they didn't quite get it under their belts, but actually we know that phonics coding can make a huge difference to children as they get older. Reading is incredibly important. As students progress through secondary school, we still expect them to develop their reading skills. An indication of this is at GCSE, GCSE papers prior to kind of 2012 were kind of age appropriate for 10 years and 6 months, age 11. So anybody in year 7 would have been able to read a GCSE paper. However, that has changed. So two years ago, the geography paper had a reading age of 16.6. The history paper had a reading age of 15.2, which demonstrates how difficult the language has changed in that time frame. 
we will constantly develop reading through the course of the second of secondary school and it's certainly not an English department um, initiative it's something that we, we prioritize for all children across the school and if we know that there are gaps in reading or gaps in phonics or comprehension we will work with your child to make sure that those gaps are closed because reading affects every single subject in school. If students can't understand the question in a maths exam at GCSE, they may be able to do the mathematics, but if they can't read the question correctly, they won't be able to answer it. So it's a really important thing for us to work on and to continue improving throughout your child's journey at school. When your son or daughter reaches year nine, we begin the options process with them. And the options process is a really exciting time. They get to think about what kinds of courses they'd like to study at Key Stage 4, whether they are vocational courses such as a VSET or a BTEC or a more traditional GCSE qualification. We ensure that the offer at Key Stage 4 for that year group is broad and balanced but also relevant to them. Every single year we run the GCSE programme, we ensure that the offer changes depending on the cohort. So for example, We've had years where we've run health and social care, years where we haven't run health and social care, but we've run photography. We may have a couple of children that are really interested in studying classical civilization or Greek mythology or um, goodness, all sorts of things, but we tailor the courses to them. We ask them at the start of the options process what kinds of courses they want to study and how that fits in with their Super North Star, their future career aspirations. And we make sure, where possible, that we can staff those courses so that every child has the opportunity to follow the pathway and follow their dreams. Homework is a regular feature for students when they join Year 7. Homework is something that is set by all subjects regularly and encourages students to reflect on things that they've learnt in school, in lessons, but also, in some cases, to prepare for future learning. Students may be asked in Year 7 to research, some, research a topic before embarking on the learning with their teacher. They may be asked to read a section of poetry or a passage for a lesson and then to comment on it as part of the, the start of the next lesson. It's not always reflective practice. But homework is there to embed learning and understanding over time. As students progress with us through the school, the expectation for homework, of course, increases as they move towards the upper school and move towards exams. We run a homework club here, as well as Year 11 prep after school where they can work independently or work with teaching staff to develop their understanding of key concepts in preparation for GCSE.